Hello everybody. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use section method to analyze a simple truss. Okay? So in the other video I showed you how to use the joint method. Here we are going to show you how to use the section method. Section method is a little bit easier if you are quite okay with taking a moment. Okay, the advantage of this method is like if you want to find out the force in any member at the middle of the truss, then basically you don't have to start from the beginning or at the corner and then you have to go step by step to that particular member there. Okay, you can just cut a section along that member and find out the force in that member. The other problem with the uh, joint method is like if you make a single mistake in any of the joints then basically you carry over this mistake all over the places which is not going to happen for uh, section method. Uh, for section method we usually assume that if the truss is in equilibrium then basically any section of that truss is also in equilibrium. Okay, so I'll show you example here, but before that, let me discuss a little bit about zero force member. Okay, zero force member means like the member doesn't have any force. Okay, now you can ask like if the member doesn't have any force, then why we have to keep that one in the truss? We usually keep that one for future use. I'll just show you the example here. Now you can see the there uh, you can definitely analyze and then you can get zero but many times from our eye inspection we can tell easily that these are the zero force member and that would make your life much easier so you don't have to um, calculate that you know like force in the member because you already know from inspection that uh, these are zero force member now there are two different type of joints at which you can say that this is like this member of this joint is zero force member okay the first one would be if you see two forces two members concurrent not concurrent but just the joint of two members and there is no external force okay i'm repeating there is no external force but only two members there and they are not concurrent here they are not concurrent so you can see this one would be zero force and this one would be zero force okay that's the first you know like a rule the second rule is if you have uh, any concurrent members here like let's say I have two members here and I have another member here so in that situation you can see that this one has to be zero because there is no you know like member here to take the force in the vertical direction other than this one okay so now I'm showing this one here. Let's say this one is, if this is like this, then you can also see this is concurrent and there is one member is coming down there. Then basically this one is zero force member. But you have to again remember that one, that there is no external force working on that particular joint. If there is any external force, then basically it will not be, it will not be zero force member, okay? So for example here, you can see I just draw this figure here just to show that hey which one is zero force member from your high estimation, right? So you can see here that this is like two members here and there is no external force working in that joint. So this is zero force member and this is zero force member. Similarly, you can just come here and you can see this point here I have one here and one member here and the no external force here so this one has to be 
again zero okay now if you come here and if you see here that this is a concurrent member like the number two here the concurrent member and this one is you know coming from the top and getting joint at this point and there is no external force this means like this one is zero force member okay now if i apply any load here then basically this one is not zero force member anymore because this member has to take the vertical load coming from here okay similarly you can see since there is no load so this one is zero force member and again if it is zero force member i'll take that one off here then you can see this is concurrent and this one is attaching there so this one is also zero force member okay so if you see here again like if i take that load off then basically this is zero force member and this is concurrent and this one is going there so basically this is also zero force member okay now you can see if i take that zero force member here then basically this is concurrent and this one is coming here there is no external load so this is zero force member okay so you will see that only this one and this one this one this one is only taking the load okay but the whole thing will change like if you add a load here okay then these are not zero force member anymore and you will see that this one will ha have some effect on the other nodes too okay so if you can you were confident that you know that this is a zero force member for sure then basically you don't have to calculate that one you can just show that one zero force member okay now let's move to our um, example here i'm gonna show you like problem number six dash 28 okay so you can see this is kind of a like tower type structure at f you have roller and at a you have pin support here now you have to find out the force here here at here okay so if i want to find out the force at ed eh and gh ed eh and gh so basically uh, the joint method we, we have to start from here first of all we have to find out the reaction here and then we can start from joint F from here we can just go to G we can find out this one and then we can find this one then we have to go there and find out the other two right that's the way we do for joint method now there is no hard and fast rule that if you use section method then you have to use section method all the time you can use section method and joint method together that's your choice okay for one member you can find out that one from section method and if you know this one then you can find out a joint and then find out the other force based on joint method that's your freedom okay now let's say for section method if I want to find out the force here here and here then I have to make a cut here and then I'll just take either left side or right side of that section to find out the force on the cut member as soon as we cut that member basically there will be some force now working along the longitudinal axis of that member right it could be either tension or could be compression now let's start this one here I'll just try to change that one as fy here if i make a section here you can see this section would be much smaller than this section it should be much easier to handle right smaller section much easier to handle so i'm gonna use this side here okay so if i find out that f y here then basically I don't need to find out this one here but I'm just drawing the free body diagram here 
let's say this is a y and this is a x okay if you want to consider like after make a cut here if you consider it like the right side then basically you have to know this one right but if you want to use the left side then basically if you know only this one that will be fine okay now let's try to solve the value here so if i take a moment at a summation of moment at a let's say counterclockwise is positive that has to be zero right so you can see if i take a moment then this force 40 is just going to rotate along a like counterclockwise okay so that's 40 multiplied by 1.5 then you can also see this 30 that's also working counterclockwise and that would be three meter you can see this force is actually passing through a right so this one will not create any moment and then again you can that see the 40 kilonewton force that's actually going counterclockwise along the point a so i would say this one is 40 multiplied by 2 and then minus fy into 4 that's actually 0 okay so if you find out your fy from here which is actually 57.5 kilonewton okay so this one is actually 57.5 kilonewton now I'm gonna cut that one here, okay? And consider the left part, okay? So I can, and again, this is your freedom. You can use left part or right part after cutting the section. Now you have to make a cut. You can ask that question, like how, how I should make a cut. You can see that here actually they are asking these three members. So I can cut it and I can do it just one single cut. Many times you will see that they are asking to find out force here and also force here. So you, you might have to cut twice, okay? This is not actually you are cutting. These are imaginary cut, okay? So you can cut it as many times as you want, okay? Now I'm using the left side. You can do that one. Now taking the right side and you will not get the same answer, okay? Now. If I cut it here, I'll just take this part off. Let's say this is force GH. This one is I don't know which way, I'm just taking that one as tension and this one as compression. So this one is F E D and this one is F E H. Okay. Here is actually your point H here. I'm showing that one dotted because now I cut that one and it's like at, a, at here. Okay, it's not within the side here. Now you have to find out the, the values of FED, FEH, and FGH. Now you can see this is the advantage of the uh, section method because now they are not you know like collinear or like not working in the same point so basically you have three equations here 
summation of fx equal to 0, summation of fy equal to 0, and summation of moment equal to 0. Now you can ask that question like which point I'm going to take my moment, right? That's the same thing like what we did earlier that you have to take a moment at a point at which you can avoid maximum number of unknowns here, right? So you can see here that this force and this force is going through point E. So if I take a moment at point E, then basically I have to, I have just one unknown here, okay? And you can solve that one quite easily, okay? So let's say summation of moment at E equal to zero. And let's say counterclockwise is positive. Okay, so you are taking moment here. So this force, this force, and this force is going through E. So this one is creating counterclockwise moment, uh, which is F G H. And the distance from here to here is actually 1.5. And then you can see this one is going clockwise direction. So this is negative. 57.5 multiplied by 2 because this distance from here to here is 2 okay so that's equal to 0 so you can see if gh is equal to 57.5 into 2 divided by 1.5 that's basically 76.7 kilonewton and since I got a positive number so the assumption that this one is tension because it's pulling from that joint is valid so you can see this is actually in tension here okay now you can see I have these two unknowns. Definitely I can solve the summation of Fy equal to zero and summation of Fx equal to zero and I can find out these two unknowns, right? But sometimes it's much easier that if you can take the moment at other points and set that one equal to zero, okay? So for here, I'll just show you both ways that how you can do that one here, okay? So if you, you see that this one and this one is going through this point H, so if I take a moment at H, so this one and this one will be avoided and there will be only one unknown here, okay? So that would be much easier to find out my FED here, okay? So that's the one way. I'll show you the alternate way, you know, to, to get that value too. So here you can just take the summation of moment at H and let's say counterclockwise is positive. So if you take that one, then you can see FED multiplied by 1.5. 1.5 is the distance from here to here, okay? Then you can see this one is also counterclockwise, that 40. So 40 multiplied by 2. And then this one would be clockwise, right? With respect to H. So this one is 57.5 multiplied by 4. That's equal to 0. Okay, so you can see in that equation you have only one unknown. And if you solve that one, so you will get FED FED is actually 100 kilonewton. And once again, if this, since this one is positive, so this you know, direction is fine, and you can see this direction is actually pushing towards the joint E. So I can say this is actually compression. Okay. Now I have just one more here. I can just find out the summation of Fy and try to find out this one, right? Now you can see here this one 
this is 1.5 vertical and here is 2 so if it is 1.5 and this is 2 then this one would be 2.5 from the Pythagoras formula okay Now what I can do, I can just take the summation of forces in the y direction. So you can see if this is positive. So 57.5 minus 40 and then minus 1.5. Vertical is one fifth by one one point five by two point five F E H that's actually equal to zero. So if you solve for F E H that would be twenty nine point two. Now, if you don't want to take the moment, I know like so for some of you, actually taking moment is a little bit difficult at that point because you are kind of new there and sometimes you have confusion which one is positive and negative. But I'll just try to, you know, like encourage you that you learn how to take the moment because that's the, you know, like the future, you know, like for, uh, you know, for your classes, you know, like you need like taking moment very correctly for many many problems in the future okay anyway so if you don't want to take the moment here and you want to take the summation of fx so basically you don't know this one here yet okay so you want to find out if ed from there and you can take the summation of fx there okay this is alternative solution So you, you can see FGH then minus no actually plus 2 by 2.5 of FEH minus FED equal to 0 okay so FED So FGH is already 76.7 and this one is 2 by 2.5 into FEH which is 29.2. So this one is actually 100 kilonewton. What you got the same value when you took the moment. Okay. So you, you can do that one either way. I'll you know, like request you to, to do this problem, just not considering the left side, left side of the section. You can just do the same problem with the right side and try to see whether you are gonna get the same answer or not, okay? Now let's move forward. Problem number 6-40. Okay, you can see the picture here uh, that here is actually hinge and here is a roller I'm showing that one as like your force so this is EY and there is two force here because there is a hinge AX and AY okay and there are one two three four five forces working at each of the nodes and you have to find out the force at CD, CF, and CG. I just denoted that one with the red, you know, two lines there, okay? So what I can do, I can just make a cut here because you can see if I want to cut here, then basically I have to cut one, two, three, four. If I cut four members, there will be four unknowns, right? Uh, and we cannot handle like four unknowns. We can maximum handle three unknowns because we have three equations. Summation of fx, summation of fy, and summation of moment. Sometimes we can handle four 
uh, unknowns if at least three of them goes to any particular point okay but here is not the case like that so we'll just take a cut here and then find out the force here here maybe here and then we'll just consider this joint to find out the force here okay that's the plan right now so if I want to make a cut here and consider the right side then basically I must have to find out my EY first if I want to find out my EY I'll just take a moment at point A okay so if you take the summation of moment at point A let's say this is counterclockwise is positive so this one would be counterclockwise so EY multiplied by 20 meters minus 3 into 20 this 3 then 5 into 15 then 4 into 10 then 4 into 5 that's equal to zero this one is going through the point a so this one doesn't have any moment at a okay so if you solve that one then basically you would get your ey is equal to 9.75 kilonewton okay so if i know about this much here now i can just make a cut here and try to find out the forces in this three members first they didn't ask me to find out the force here but if I want to find out the force here then if I know this one then for this joint there will be two unknowns and I can find that out easily okay so uh, let's make a cut there okay So this is FCD This is FGF And this one is FCF Okay so what I can do, I can just take a moment at F so this two would be unknown, this, this two would be avoided and I can find out the FCD at that point, okay? So so let's take a moment at F, summation of a moment at F. Let's say counterclockwise is positive. So you can see this is F, EY is negative, which is 9.75 multiplied by 5. Okay, then minus 3 into 5. This one is passing through point F. So you can see this one has to be negative because it's clockwise FCD multiplied by distance from here to here which is 3 meter equal to 0. So if I solve for FCD, then 
and we get that one is 11.25. And this one is positive so my direction is okay okay since this direction is pushing towards the joint so this is compression okay now uh, what we can do uh, we can just take another moment and this point here which is actually C. If I take a moment at C then basically this one and this one are passing through this one and I can have only this unknown here okay because I know this this and this okay so that's the way I can find out this force here. So what we have to do actually we have to find out the angle here because I have to take the component of this force like in horizontal and vertical direction. So this angle is basically you can see from the figure that this is 2 and this way is 5 so theta is equal to 10 inverse 2 by 5 that's basically 21.8 degree okay 21.8 degrees so if I take the moment at C let's say counterclockwise is positive so C, you can see this force and this force. So there's the, actually, let's start with EY 9.75 multiplied by 10. Then you can see this one is 3 into 10 minus 5 into 5. Okay. This force and this force is uh, passing through point C. So I dissolve that for force FCG. Then you can see FCG. This one is FCG is going like this and this. So you can see this one is clockwise and this one is also clockwise. So FCG cosine 21.8 that's the horizontal component and the distance from here to here is 3 similarly I can take the FCG sine 21.8 which is this way downward right the distance from here to the line of action of that force is actually 5. So that's equal to 0. So if you solve FCG from there, then basically you get FCG is equal to uh, 9.155 kilonewton and definitely that's tension because I got the positive sign here okay now you can just take the other equation here and try to find out your CF from here so what I can do I can just take the summation of forces in the y direction and find that out right 
you can also take the summation of force in the x direction and you can find that out too. So let's try to do that one using the like summation of Fy. So this is your Fy. So this is 9.75 minus 5 minus 3 then here 9.155 sine 21.8 plus F C F this angle here Okay, cosine of that angle. No, sine of that angle, sorry. Sine of that angle. And this angle is basically tan inverse 3 by 5, so which is 30.96. Okay, so this angle here is actually tan inverse 3 by 5 which is 30.96 okay so if you solve f c f here then basically you get your f c f which is 3.21 kilonewton okay now actually I have to find out the other one which is actually CG okay so if I draw the joint CG This angle is basically 21.8 degree here and I know I already find that out which is 9.155 kilonewton okay and from the symmetry this one is also 21.8 degrees now if I take the summation of fx equal to 0 Then you can see F G F cosine 21.8 minus F G H cosine 21.8 equal to 0 so F G H is equal to F G F which is 9.155 okay now if I take the summation of forces in the x direction in the y direction so you can see that would be F G H sine 21.8 plus F GF sine 21.8 minus FCG that's equal to 0. So FCG equal to 
155 sign 21.8 plus again 9.155 sign 21.8 degrees which is actually Uh, 6.8 kilonewton and you can see this one is going towards the joint so this is basically compression okay so in this same problem we are using um, section method as well as joint method to find out the forces okay now let's move forward problem number 6-47 okay this is the figure here you can see that there are six actually five forces are working here each of them is six kilonewton I have a roller here and a, a hinge here and I have to find out the forces at KJ CJ and CD okay so what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna make a section here and then consider the left part here so that I can find out all those three numbers here. But before that, I have to find out the reaction. But you can see this is a very symmetric figure and the loads are also very symmetric. I have 30 kilonewton load here, five into six, 30 kilonewton load. So without taking any moment, I can just say this is 15 kilonewton and this is 15 kilonewton and if you see that actually there is no external force in the horizontal direction so if you take the summation of force in x direction then basically you will get your ax equal to zero okay so now i have to make a cut here and then try to solve that one from there So let's say if it is force uh, CD F CJ and this is my force F KJ here okay now one of the things that would be very very important here just to find out this angle here so which is basically tan inverse 3 by 2 okay so that's actually 56.31 degree and if you see this angle here which is actually same angle here that would be tan inverse 3 by 6 which is 26.56 degrees okay now what we can do we can take like moment now which point we can take moment we can take moment at point C we can take moment at point K here no no this is K this is J here so if you take a moment at point J then basically you see that F K J and F C J passing through that point J so you can find out F C D easily right so let's start with that so summation of moment at j equal to zero let's say counterclockwise is positive so if you just take a moment here this one and this one is going there so i have this force this force this is counterclockwise 
right? So 6 into 2 plus 6 into 4 this one minus a y which is 15 into 6 and then you can see this one uh, f c d which is actually counterclockwise so I've just said this one is f c d multiplied by 3 because if you consider here then basically the distance from here to the line of action of that force is 3 okay so that's basically 0 so if you solve that one then basically you get FCD equal to 18 kilonewton. Once you get that one then basically you can take the summation of Fx and summation of Fy you can find out that one uh, that way too. But you can also take moment of different location and try to find out the forces there too. So I'll just ask you to do like the other two forces using like summation of Fx and Fy and I'm going to show you how to find out this force using the moment. Okay. Now let's take a moment at let's say point C. So if you take a moment here, then you can see this force, this force, and this force is passing through point C, right? So I have this force, this force, and this force here, okay? So if I take a moment of counterclockwise positive, so 6 into 2 then minus 15 into 4 Okay, and then this force here, I can just get one component here and one component here. And this component will, this vertical component will pass through C and this component will clockwise, you know, like moment along point C. So this one is, let's say, F K J cosine 26.56 multiplied by the distance, uh, multiply the distance from here to here, which is actually 2. So if you solve that one, then basically you will get F K J F K J is twenty six point eight. Okay. Uh, now you can also see actually. Uh, this one is negative so basically the direction would be like this okay so I can if I change the direction I can take this one off and I can see this one is going towards the joint so that's basically compression here this one FCD is actually tension right because this is going away from the joint C okay similarly you can just find out the other force which is fcj by taking the moment at point a so if you take a moment at point a
so you can see this one is passing through actually point A so this one is minus 6 into 2 and then minus 6 into 4 this force is passing through A this force is also passing through this force is also passing through A so I'll take this force into two components here and here and you can see that the horizontal one is passing through also point A so I have only vertical component multiply the distance from here to here so what is that vertical component that's basically FCJ because this is counterclockwise FCJ sine 56 0.31 multiplied by the distance from here to here which is 4 that's equal to 0 so you can find out FCJ from there which is basically 10.8 kilonewton and you can see this one is going away from point C so that's basically tension here Okay, so I found out all three forces using just the moment at different locations. Okay, but you can do that while using summation of fx and fy and just one moment. Okay, that's up to you that how you want to solve that problem. Okay, thank you for watching.